you know, our sign language interpreter. President William Ruto's allies in the legal sector have swung to his defense, stating that it is indeed time to initiate radical changes to the country's judicial system. Senior lawyer and former member of the Judicial Service Commission, Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi, while speaking exclusively to NTV's Sydney Chazima, called out Chief Justice Martha Kome, claiming that the alleged rot and incompetence in the judiciary was being overseen by her. Let's hear more from the interview. Um, first thing first, we woke up today with a tweet from the president mentioning you about uh, some warnings you had, you had given him about uh, the corruption that is uh, allegedly in the judiciary. Uh, what did you warn him about? No, no, I mean, I mean, I was embedded with the presidential campaign, you know, when he was campaigning to become president. And one of the things I've advised him so many times is about the judiciary, you know, uh, the need to reform the judiciary because the status quo of the judiciary as of 2022 was not tenable going forward. Uh, I've told him about, you know, how endemic corruption is, uh, how, you know, the judiciary, you know, will be very active player in a negative manner in the politics, the economy, and the social progression of society. So the president was alive. I mean, I mean, he had his own uh, view on the judiciary. Uh, I knew he will come back to it, but I think this is the right time. He thought that he should probably visit that agenda. As an insider and a person who has served in the JSC, um, who are these people that the president is, is referring to as people who are hindering uh, his progress and his uh, uh, projects through uh, constant litigation? I think what the president has is, you know, uh, is uh, this thing doesn't happen out of the blue. I mean, I mean, the courts don't just give injunctions like that, stopping. I mean, it's a network of people sometimes that, you know, plan in advance, prepare uh, lawyers who will represent them, prepare the courts that will listen to them, and get judgments that stop this kind of process. I give an example of a case uh, which uh, the Honorable Paul Mute was, I was involved in the case myself. Uh, during the time of uh, President Kibaki, I mean, Uhuru, Uhuru had a lot of problems with the Teacher Service Commission. I mean, they were a headache. And I thought, you know, the best way to solve the problem was through the courts. So it went to one court, went to another court, went to the Supreme Court. And uh, the end result was that the courts, you know, killed J uh, teachers not. We have seen the government as an active player, you know, in corruption. But the corruption is, I mean, lawyers are involved, I will not deny. Uh, we know who does it. It is, I mean, you'll see, I, I tell guys when, uh, when uh, Willie was a lawyer, uh, we, senior counsel, we used to get a lot of, you know, referrals. Clients will insist that they need a senior counsel in their brief because they want. Nowadays, you'll see someone who is one year uh, in practice, you know, pushing the biggest case in town for that month. And he, they don't need a senior counsel, they don't need a good lawyer, because the judge will help them out. You don't need, I mean, you get a young lawyer actually, I mean your case can go under the radar, uh, because you get a young lawyer who is not known, you talk to the judge, and you get what you want. Someone might argue that this is the head of state, he has all the instruments at his disposal, and if he knows these people who are corrupt, why doesn't he go through the channel of the JSC and maybe fill that case there? Yes, it's true. You know, the judiciary is a self-contained institution. I mean, it was the architecture of our constitution was in a such manner that nobody can interfere with it, and it's a good architecture. But the current situation is that uh, the, the, that architecture is broken down. The JEC doesn't work. The chief justice has no idea about what the problem is facing the judiciary. Are. If you go to uh, the Honorable Chief Justice comment today, and ask her what are the problems, she will tell you there are no problems because she's oblivious to what's happening in the judiciary. She is oblivious to the corruption in all the courts, whether it's the Supreme Court, whether it's the Court of Appeal, and I always say to a lesser extent the Court of Appeal than all other courts in the country. But when you have a chief justice that is oblivious, that has no idea about what's happening in the judiciary, how can an important institution, you know, like the judiciary work? The JSC during her tenure has completely failed. I personally, I mean, I, I've lodged so many complaints. I mean, they will write you a letter and say that your, your petition has been dismissed because you are challenging the decision of a court. If 
the disciplinary mechanism of the judiciary has failed. What signal does it send to the judges that there is complete immunity, that nobody will touch them? When you don't have a disciplinary process and procedure that works, the system will collapse, and that's what happened in this country. I tell guys, you know, I practiced law for 31, 30 years. I have never seen the state of corruption in the judiciary now than any of my 31 years. Even during Moy's time, it wasn't this bad. And why? Because the chief justice, you know, I mean, uh, have you ever seen the chief justice talk about corruption? No. Have you ever seen the chief justice talk about the number of years it takes for a simple case to be had? No. I mean, cases are taking five, ten years. We think it's a problem of judges. We employed so many judges. <laughs> we employed 30 judges of the Court of Appeal. The High Court has now about 200, 250 judges. It doesn't help. Why? Because the system isn't working for Kenyans. You've constantly been tweeting about uh, CJ Kome. Do you have any beef with CJ Kome? No, I've, I've told you so. I've, <laughs> I wish her the best. What is your basis of that argument? I mean, her let us not personalize this, but if you, look at, you know, if you look at the performance of the Chief Justice during her tenure, I think, which is two and a half years, show me what she has done. Show me. She, when she comes to office, this is the program, you know, this is her agenda. It's called the social transformation, social transformation through access to justice. It's a 42-page document. 42-page document. Uh, I think 30 pages are photographs. It's a 10-page prose. You can't run the judiciary of this republic with all the problems it faces, with all the challenges it faces, on a 10 page document. It just shows that she doesn't even understand what the problems of this country is. And it's a tragedy that, you know, all the judges of this court, you know, none has critiqued or talked what social transformation means. It means nothing, actually. This means nothing. It does, when you read this document, it will not tell you anything about our agenda. So when you want to run the judiciary on a 10 page document, I mean, that is a very serious problem you will have. And that is why, you know, I mean, the chickens have come home to roost for the CJ. Because when you don't have a program on how to run an institution like this, these problems will come. And that's what she is facing now. She is facing an institution where the highest court in the country to the lowest court are taking the law into their own hands. They can do what they want, and there's no accountability. There was one senator uh, during that burial of the father to John Methu, uh, Senator Karungo Wadhangwa, who is the senator of Kiambu. He stood up and told the president that the former president, Uhu Kenyatta, while uh, administrating his duties, there are some court orders that he ignored, and nothing was done to him. And therefore, they are telling the president to go downward that path and that nothing will happen to him and that if he has to go ahead and, and make development this, in this country, he has to go down that route. As someone who is close to the president, would you give that advice that there are some um, um, court orders that he has to defy in order to uh, get his manifesto working? No, no, no. I will, not, <laughs> I will not give that. And I don't think the president will do that. I think the president, when orders are made against him or his government, will obey those. And I think there's an obligation on the president to obey court decisions. But you can't have a judiciary, you know, that's uh, a, a judiciary that is controlled by third parties that actively sabotages either government or ordinary citizens or is a rogue institution. And I think that's what the president's beef is. It's not that orders were made against this government. Orders will be made against this government and he will have to live with it. And I don't think it's an option for him to to disobey court orders. The option he exercised and which he is doing is to ensure that this corruption that has permeated uh, the judiciary, that has captured the judiciary institution and to which the chief justice and the JEC have no idea about, he must address it. The president, when he came into power, he uh, quickly went on to appoint the judges that uh, the former president had refused or maybe slowed down in appointing them. And then we saw he also, one of his promises, he said that he'll operationalize the judiciary fund, which he did. Um, someone would sit, let me, let me talk from a, a pedestrian argument, that probably the president expected that uh, some of the decisions would maybe go in his favor. Is that the case? No, no, actually, I mean, uh, what the president did was right. Both, both the operationalization of the fund and the appointment of the four judges were completely right. 
But I think, I, I think the strategy was very simplistic. The president did not appreciate, you know, the depth of the rot. I mean, what we was addressing are very superficial issues. The appointment of judges, you know, which the former president refused. I mean, that should be the natural course of events. The president should appoint, and the operationalization of the fund was, you know, it's very important. But the judiciary has a structural problem. There are fundamental problems. I mean, if you look at, for example, the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court hears 60% of cases it should not hear. It has no jurisdiction, but I mean, they decide. It's a very powerful institution. If they say they want to listen to case X, they will listen to case X. But the law tells them what kind of cases they listen. If you look at the high court, if you could look at the land court, I mean, there's complete anarchy in our courts. They, the law, I mean, there's a complete breakdown. The most uh, prominent case about the disciplinary of uh, justice, uh, uh, the judges, we've heard about Said Juma Chitembwe. Is he one among many that we are seeing in the public being action being taken against them? When you look at, you know, when you look at Chitembwe, Said Chitembwe, and what he was accused of, and, uh, you know, you look into what's happening in our courts and what judges do, Said's uh, malfeasance or what he did will not occur even in the top, you know, 500. Yes. It will not, what he did, eh? You know, the incident, you know, what Sonko, Governor Sonko recorded, the complaint. I mean, if you look at that, it's not even like the top 500. Said Chitembe was just unlucky, <laughs> you know. It was not because the system worked, you know, to get him. I don't know why, but there are people who do worse than that. And nobody touches them. Nobody touches them. So we, 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 we ought to have another Sonko moment for something to pop up. Uh, yes, I think, I mean, we, we must congratulate Governor Sonko for, you know, his, you know, activism in seeing that too. But we, there are many people who try. There are many times we lodge complaints and we are not even given a hearing, you know. They will not even hear you. They will just write you a letter to say that your complaint has been dismissed. You are challenging uh, the decision of the judge. I mean... Chitimbo, I will repeat, eh? it's not the top 500. Mm -hmm. You will not even qualify for top 500. Yes. All right. And uh, before we finish, the issue I take you back to that uh, ruling that was made on the housing levy. And uh, David Majanja, Justice David Majanja, he ruled that the, uh, the levy was unconstitutional, then came back and said that you are giving stay orders. And the argument was, how can you give stay orders on something you have said that is unconstitutional? What do you make of that judgment? Yes, I mean, uh, I wasn't following that debate a lot, but I, I agree. I mean, even a layman will agree that if you find something is in breach of the Constitution, you cannot give it a validity for another day. I mean, it has, it has broken the Constitution according to you. It's unconstitutional according to you. You can't give a stay. I mean, a stay can be given in many matters, but I don't think a court, when it finds certain facts, a contra constitution cannot give a validation for a month or two months or three months. Yes. What would be would you do? What would be the radical surgery that you would procure at the, uh, at the judiciary? Well, this is a very difficult problem. I mean, uh, it is, you know, reforming the judiciary is not easy. Uh, I have seen people I know very well. I've seen people I know personally. You know, people who are in, who are in school together. We practice law together. Uh, when I was in the GAC, I voted for them. I said, you know, X. I know him. I mean, he knows the law. He's a good man. Let us give him the job. And when we give them the job, they become the most corrupt. Yes. You know, when I was in the JC and we said we don't want the judges of the High Court or the Court of Appeal to become Supreme Court, we looked for guys from outside to, be, to go to the Supreme Court. And we have an absolute disaster. So it's not an easy process. It's a very difficult process. I know we can remove them. I know we can, you know, vet them out. But, you know, there is no guarantee that the people you bring will be better than the ones you are removing. That's it. And that is why now, despite the self-contained nature of this institution, the president, the legislature, the executive, the opposition, all Kenyans now, we need to sit and see how to address this problem. It can't wait tomorrow. And finally, as, a, as an ardent supporter of this Kenya Kwanzaa administration, Adam is not the right word. Just. <laughs> <laughs> As a supporter of this administration, um, so far, how would you rate the president's performance all round, 
and uh, what are some of the decisions that he has made or what are some of the decisions that his ministers have made that you feel they, they shouldn't have and uh, what would you give uh, uh, as, as the scorecard? I tell guys first I don't work for the president but I have discussions with him often, I talk to him often, uh, I give him my views very candid. Uh, I've told him many times that this government isn't performing uh, as good as we thought it will. Uh, I, I think the weaknesses, in my view, is you know the kind of people he appointed. Uh, I think the caliber of you know, some of his people who work for him. But I think uh, you know, my my understanding of the president is very calculating. Eh? I mean, he has his own agenda. He has his own timetable. I think. Uh, one is the economy, and I think his priority all along, in my view, was the economy. I think the economy will stabilize probably the first half of this year. Once they pay the euro bond, once they get this, uh, you know, three, four billion a year from the IMF. One is, one is I think the economy stabilizes. I think the president is a, is a very calculating political animal. And I think he has his own, you know, timetable and agenda for everything. And I think we'll see, you know, the politics of him, you know, probably in the second half of this year or the early part of his third year. The entirety of that interview will be posted on 